Welcome good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope you're well today, hope you're feeling grand, not as well in your world. Hi! I welcome to another episode of How to Play Like John Fashanti! Ah, in this, oh, well, that was even weird. Anyway, in this episode, uh, I want to teach you a song uh, in its entirety, and the song I've chosen is Danny California. I feel it's a really good kind of, um, kind of starting point. It's got simple bits, complex bits, and downright mental bits. Um, you know, like the ending. But uh, but I feel it's a great kind of place to start, you know, getting into that kind of John feel. It's just, it's just got kind of everything, you know, John related in there. It's got like, you know, chord, nice chord use, um, nice little twiddly, you know, diddly dums, uh, Ned Flanders bits, uh, you know, big rocking distortion kind of choruses and an amazing guitar solo, really modern guitar solo and crazy wah wah solo. So it's got everything really, you know, you kind of, want to know about John's playing. So I really kind of thought it was a good place to kind of start. Um, and after 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 this lesson, I am going to go heavily into theory. And I'm going to do about two or three lessons on, you know, unlocking the neck John style. And then I'm going to teach another song, which will be Scar Tissue, just so you can kind of like start putting some of the things I've spoke about into kind of practical um, use, let's say. Because uh, you, you, you're not going to learn to play like John if you just kind of approach it from a theoretical standpoint. You know, you need to know the theory, but once you know it, you need to put it into practical um, usage, otherwise it just, you know, it doesn't work. So, more of that next week, or hopefully the week after, or, you know, hopefully when I get around to it. Today, Danny California. Uh, song is entirely on the bass pickup, uh, neck pickup of the Strat, um, apart from one bit where he does this crazy thing with the select switch, which I'll talk about in a minute. We only did it on the recording, no, never live. Um, what else to say? Pedals used DS2 for distortion, Ibanez Wah for the crazy <laughs> bit at the end. Weird face. Uh, and the that bit where he goes. That bit, um, that's a Mooga Fuga Murph pedal that he used there to uh, get that kind of like, underwater y warbly sound. And what he did was he recorded it clean, so it's like that. And then after it was recorded, they ran the tape through, well, not not physically, but they ran that that sound through the pedal, and it altered the sound of it. And he ran it through like three or four times or something. There's a great interview with uh, John talking about all the treatment he did on the track. Um, you know, I'm sure quite a few of you have seen it. So uh, yeah, that's it really. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there's no other pedals used really. It's just DST Ibanez Wah and that Mugafu Murph pedal. Um, I guarantee it's a 62 Strat, Silver Jubilee, uh, Marshall Major. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. So, without further ado, let's get into teaching the first section of the song, the verse. So, let's get going. Ha! Okay, so, chords to Danny California are A minor, G major, D minor, and A minor again. So that's the verse chords. Uh, so A minor is played uh, two different ways. You see John play it every now and again like this, but mainly he plays it with his thumb over the top. So um, thumb is on the fifth fret on the low E. Ring finger is on the seventh fret A. Little finger, seventh fret D. And your first finger bars the G, B and high E strings on the fifth fret. So actually A minor. So your middle finger isn't used at all here. So that's just kind of like, you know, it, you know like that. So that's your A minor. The next chord is G major, so you're basically kind of moving up to your third fret now. Your thumb goes on the third fret, low E. Ring finger is now on the fifth fret on the A. Little finger, fifth fret D. Uh, your middle finger, your middle finger comes in now on the fourth fret on the G, and then your your first finger bars the B and the high E strings on uh, the third fret, and then you go to D minor, and uh, you don't play the high uh, either of the, stri the the E strings here, so no low and no high E. So your first finger is on the fifth fret on the A. Uh, your ring finger then goes on the um, seventh fret. I oh, can't count. Seventh fret on the D. Little finger seventh fret G. And your middle finger goes on the sixth fret on the B. And thumb still over the top, and I use it to kill the low E string so you don't get this, which is not nice. Uh, so that's the D. 
and then back to your A. And that's that's it, that's the chords. And the rhythm is what you do is you play the top string of your note, the root note of your chord twice before you hit the actual whole chord. So it's uh, low E string twice, and then the whole chord, and then a low E string again, twice, and the whole chord, and then your A string twice, and then the whole chord, and then back to your low E string again twice, whole chord. And it's it's kind of, the rhythm is this. And you can hear that emphasis on the last kind of, um, you know, the last kind of strum of the guitar, and that's really important. that kind of way you hit the full chord has to be locked in with the snare drum on the track so that's kind of if you want to kind of listen really closely that is right on Chad's snare drum so that's kind of like you know important to note that emphasis is really there and they're all together on that one so that's got to be really tight so uh, low E string and then the snare snare hit basically so that's that um, pretty straightforward that's the main bulk of the verse throughout the entire song so let's now talk about the Twiddly, twiddly Ned Flanders part. Okay, so next part of Danny California is the uh, diddly dum bits. The... the twiddly bits, if you will. Uh, the first time around, uh, it does this section longer than it does the last couple of times, if that makes any sense. Um, it's kind of double, so to say. Um, but let me show you it first before we talk about when it's used and whatever. So the first one is basically an A minor again, but we're getting rid of the A, B, and high E strings. So we've got uh, our thumb over the top on the A string on the low E, on the A note, sorry, on the low E. The A string on the low E string. Interesting stuff, Dave, where did you learn? Anyway, moving along. So first note is our thumb is on the top, uh, low E string for fret. And then our ring finger is on the uh, octave note, which is an A note again, on the D string, 7th fret. And the A string is not played, I'm killing it with my thumb. It's best to kill it with your thumb because you need this finger to be kind of away from it, if that makes any sense. So that's the first kind of chord we're doing. And then our first finger is on the G string on the 5th fret. But we're not playing that straight off the bat, and you know, you're just basically playing these two notes. And that's the rhythm. And then you put a twiddle in. A diddly dum. So your diddly dum happens between the 5th, 7th fret and the G. So you hammer on from your 5th on your G string to your 7th. Pull off. And then you finish up on the 7th fret on your D. And it's important to note, once you hit that diddly dum, don't play your, low, your, your bass note. Let it go away, because you don't, you know, John doesn't do it, and it does sound cluttered when you do it. It doesn't sound very nice. It sounds a lot clean and clearer when you don't play your bass note. So play the bass note on the that, and then once you get to that, get that bass note out of there totally. Just go away, bass note. We don't want you anymore. So really slow. One more time. So that's the A, the G. Again, no A, B, or high E strings. And what we're doing, form over top on the third fret. And then your ring finger goes onto the fifth fret D. A string's dead. And it, uh, same kind of thing, you know, you play that first. And then your diddly dong happens between your fourth and your fifth on uh, your G string. So uh, I use my middle finger and my ring finger to do the diddly dum uh, but if you know if you find it more easy to use your first and your second or your little finger and, and that or, or or that yeah use whatever's comfortable for you to get it clean and clear and, and, and nice so form over the top uh low e a string dead uh fifth fret d uh and your diddly dum happens between fourth fifth g so hammer on from the fourth on the g string to the fifth on the g string pull off and end up on the 5th fret on the D. So, and it's a different rhythm. The G, the G 
uh, to the diddly dum is different rhythm to the A diddly dum, if that makes any sense. The rhythm for the A is, and then the rhythm for the G is, da -da. so, so, if that makes any sense, hopefully that makes sense. Then the fiddly one, the D minor next, and this is really fiddly. You need all, uh, you need all five fingers, well, five fingers, four fingers and a thumb for this bit. So what you do for the D is you slide from the third fret on your A to the fifth fret on your A. So C note to a D note, and then your first, your middle finger, sorry, wants to be on the sixth fret on the B. Your ring finger wants to be on the seventh fret on the G, and you do your diddly dum with your little finger. Now this is very difficult, and don't worry if you don't get it straight away. Work at it. But John doesn't get it all the time live. He does, you know, he had it in the studio. You don't know how many times he did it, so he got it. But um, it is difficult to kind of do this one, and especially because this is the only diddly dum in the whole song where you kind of keep the bass note on. If that makes any sense, on the A and the G. Once you get that, you get rid of your bass note. On the D, you leave it in. So, slide there. That's the diddly. So you're reaching right over. And I don't put the um, 7th fret G note on till I have to. It just makes it easier to get the to get your little finger over there. Because it's, it's, fairly, you know, it's a fairly decent stretch. Uh, my thumb's still over the top though, John's is still over the top at this point as well. So the diddly dum happens 7th uh, fret, sorry not 7th fret, 6th fret on your B and then you hammer on to this 8th fret on your B with your little finger and then you finish up uh, with your ring finger on the 7th fret on the G. And you keep your bass note on. And Whereas with these, the A and the G, you can kind of get away with doing the John Strum thing, where you're killing all the other strings. On the D, it's better to pick out the notes. It does sound cleaner. If you kind of do it any other way, it sounds messy. If you kind of strum it, it does sound really messy. So, you know, it does sound cleaner if you pick it. And that was a ter terrible, terrible attempt. I don't even get it sometimes. It is very difficult. So, uh, so that's your next one. Um, so that's the whole thing together so far. Really slow is this. Ah, didn't mean to go to that bit yet. So the whole thing so far, take two is like this. One more time, really slow. Okay, so that's up to that point. And the first time you hear this, like I said earlier on, it is doubled. So it goes round um, one extra time than it normally does, if that makes any sense, because it's like a double verse at the beginning of Dallas, California. Um, and what you're doing at the end of this first one is this. So. And then you go back to this, the A. But what you're doing here is you're not playing the A and the D strings now. You're playing now the uh, G, B, and high E, and you basically form over top on the low, on the low E on the A note, and uh, then you bar in these bottom three strings, and you do this twiddle for the first time around. And it's strange because you kind of like rake upwards to get the diddle. So. play it. <laughs> so that's the first twiddle and what it is yeah I'll say you're barring the uh, G B and high E on the on the fifth fret and you're hammering on to the uh, sixth fret on your B and then pull off and you finish up on the G string fifth fret and the high E strings in there it just know, it just adds an extra thing it's very strange yeah add in the octave note it sounds fuller <laughs> so do add that so it's basically just 
A string is the only string not being played. Get rid of it, that octave and the bass note when um, you do the twill. The sounds clean. Um, so that's the first time around. So again, really slow now with it all, and I hope this is making sense. First time around's that. Second time around, you do this. Which is very kind of strange. It's like a diddly dumb, but not quite. It's like a diddly. It's a Ned Flanders bit. So what you do is kind of, you're raking up, but you're just pulling off, but you're not resolving it to that note. So it's hammer on and just pull off. So the whole first time you hear all these uh, the diddly dumb bits in Dallas, California is this, really slow. So that's the first time it does that. The next, the second time you hear it, it doesn't stay so long. Uh, well, it doesn't kind of go to the D the second time around. It does this. And it goes to the build to the chorus, which is just your D minor shape. And it's kind of important to kind of like, you know, ease off your dynamic here and build it up as it gets into the chorus. So. So you, you, you kind of hear it building up. And that's what, I hope that made sense. So the first time the diddly dums come along, it's this. From that point on, it does this. that kind of extended one once and that's right at the beginning from that point on it's just that section and I say that build up into the chorus is so important to kind of like hit it hard first and then ease off and then really lay into it before you're kicking your DS2 and go into your, your chorus so let's talk chorus okay so chorus to Danny California uh, the chords are F5 C5 D5 and G5 they're just power chords Fun beyond neck. Uh, John doesn't play this with fun over the top at all, um, so I'm not going to. <laughs> just want, just want to be accurate, you know. So uh, F5, you know, it's just basic power chord. First finger, first fret on the low E. Ring finger is now on the third fret on the A. Little finger is on the third fret on the D. So that's your first chord. C5, first finger, third fret A. Ring finger. 5th fret D, little finger, 5th fret G, uh, then you move that shape up 2 frets to the 5th uh, fret, so 1st finger now is on the 5th fret, uh, ring finger on the 7th fret D, little finger on the G string, D, uh, on the 7th uh, fret, that's D5, and your G5 is 1st finger on the 3rd fret on the low E, Ring finger on the fifth fret A, and little finger on the fifth fret D. So the whole thing is this. And did you see the little bit that I'm getting to here? On the C, John does this. before he slides, because he slides the C, from the C into the D. But what he does is, he goes, hits it once, and then he takes his finger, first finger off to get the open A, and then puts it back down again, and then slides off. So it's that, really slow. So the whole thing, really slow. So what you do 
doing, yeah, like I say, you're hitting it with the C5, then finger up, get the A note, then put it back down again and slide across to your fifth, your D. So that's the chorus, that's it. And then the end ends on, uh, it ends on just the D. So it's... So it just, you know, that's the... So that's how the chorus ends. So let's go on to the next section, which is this kind of really cool unison bending harmony thing. Okay, so straight after the first chorus, John does this harmony thing, and I'm gonna show you the, uh, the lower harmony that John would always do on his own before Josh uh, started playing guitar with him on stage. So it's unison bending, and what I mean by unison bending is, uh, if we take the first one, we go to the B string on the 10th fret, that's where our first finger goes, and then our middle finger and our ring finger then goes on the G string. Uh, my middle finger goes on the 11th fret, and then my first, my ring finger, so it goes on the 12th fret on the G. And what you're doing is you're bending up the G string, uh, leaving the B string where it is, you're just bending up the G string to get to that same note. So you're getting, so basically it's the same thing. And that's called unison bending because they're in unison. So this is what John's doing here, but what he's doing is vibratos the, uh, the, G, the G string. Yeah, it just sounds a little bit, it kind of wobbles it a little bit more. And if I remember correctly, actually, I've just remembered that uh, this section here, I'm, I was a liar earlier on when I said, this section here is recorded using a fuzz pedal of some description. I've, uh, I don't think he ever says, but it's actually this is actually a fuzz pedal. So I do apologise earlier on, but I say mainly it's DS2. Live. Let's talk about the live. Let's try and get out of jail on that one, Dave. <laughs> anyway, so that's the first one. 10th fret, 12th fret, bending up. And then the next one is you go down to your 8th and 10th fret. So again, it's the same kind of thing. Your G string 10th fret, bend up. And your B string is the 8th fret, don't, you know, don't move that. So first one, 10th and 12th, 8th and 10th. And then you go all the way up here to your 15th and your 17th. To your next one. And then back down to your 10th and your 12th. So whole thing so far. So that's that. And then the next time it goes 10th and 12th, uh, 8th and 10th, 15th and 17th. Then it's 17th on the high E, and uh, where are we? 20th fret on the B to finish off. So this is a really high one. So the whole thing really slow. 10th and 12th, 8th and 10th, 15th and 17th, 20th and 12th on the G and B. Second time around. 10th and 12th, 8th and 10th, 15th and 17th, and to finish off, 17th and 20th on the B and the high E. And that's that section, and you're back into... And you're back into your second verse, well, third verse technically. Okay, so, um... Yeah, that's that section, and then it's, uh, where are we, second verse, back into the diddly -dum. Then it's shorter diddly dums, it's just this. So again, it's only, you know, it's single that time, and you, and you can hear anyway, so yeah, it, it is a lot, uh, it's a shorter that from, Dylan does that kind of longer one once, as I say. So that's that, um, middle eight, let's talk about the middle eight now. Oh, and I'm quickly want to mention quick before I do uh, go on to the middle eight. Uh, if you want to do a little improv solo over this bit, um, 
you are soloing A minor pentatonic down here. <laughs> So you're basically starting at 17th, 20th, low E, 17th, 19th on the A, 17th, 19th on, on the D, 17th, 19th on the G, 17th, 20th on the B, 17th, 20th on the high E. And you can kind of bend up. You know, it's just basically using kind of that pentatonic scale and, and bending up certain notes, like, you know, that 20th fret. You know, that's what you want to do if you kind of mess around with improvisation there. So, and that's what John would do, you know, just to change things up. So, anyway, middle eight. Let's talk about the middle eight. Okay, so first chord in middle eight is uh, B minor. So, form is now over the top on the seventh fret on the low E. Ring finger, ninth fret A. Little finger, ninth fret D. And then first finger is borrowing the G, B, and high E strings on, you know, on the seventh fret. There we go. I don't know where I was. It's the, it's the X fret on the J axis of the ninth middle of the G. Yeah, it's all gone wrong. Anyway, wow. Anyway, B minor is a great chord. I like it. Anyway, this is the middle eight of Danny Fauna. Let's get back to reality and what's actually happening, Dave. Gravy. Anyway, so first chord, B minor. And then the next chord is G major, and you're playing it down here. So 10th fret, your first finger. And I'm, I'm killing the low uh, E string my thumb here, but 10th uh, fret on the uh, A string, it's your first note, that's your G note. And then what John does, in typical John kind of power chord style, is how I play as well. Uh, I got it from John, um, and he got it from Jimi Hendrix. So, but anyway, that's another story. Let's get back to the lesson, Dave, gravy. So. Your ring finger is then barring the 12th fret on D, G, and B strings. And it's, you know, you can see his hand, it looks like that. So B minor. And it's the same kind of room as the verse, so you're hitting the low E string first, and then you're hitting the four chord. And the same thing with the G, so you hit the root note first, which is there. Then you hit the um, the twelfth fret uh, on the twelfth fret. Yeah, the, the three strings on the twelfth fret. <laughs> Gravy. I've lost my brain. I've lost my brain. Ugh. So that's the first bit. And you only go to the G once, and then you go to this chord, which is first finger. It's an F. It's an F sharp of uh, some description. Um, <laughs> First finger is on the ninth fret on the A. Your little finger is on the 12th fret on the D. Ring finger, uh, 11th fret on the G, and your uh, middle finger is on the 10th fret on the B. It's a, it's a bit of a funny chord to kind of get to. What you can do is you, again you can it, it seems to be a kind of reoccurring theme with this track of, of you play the bass note first and then you play the chord so you you buy yourself some time before you kind of have to get your fingers down so that's this next chord and you finish up on this which is just an f sharp uh, five so it's just uh first thing you don't move your first finger from the ninth fret on the a and you just uh, ring finger on the D string, uh, 11th fret, and your little finger on the 11th fret on the G. So it's from that to that. And you kind of hear it's a gr lovely, lovely change. Very subtle, but really lovely. So the whole thing together really slow. change will take a bit of getting used to. You know, so that's the middle eight, and uh, out of the middle eight, after that, well it does that kind of round for a bit, and then it stays on the B. On this really high bit, which I can't do because I sound like a dead frog. So it does 
that and then it does this little riff which is what you're doing you're sliding I slide from the third fret uh, up to the seventh fret on the low E and then you go to the fifth fret on your A and then to your seventh fret on your A and you finish up on the seventh fret on your low E again Do it with two fingers, Django Reinhardt style. So hopefully I won't kind of like you know, uh, mask it too much. And with the slide, you don't want to stay too long. I mean, you can slide from slide from anywhere because that you don't want to be too far. You don't want to be too quick on that note so you can hear it. You don't want to go. It wants to be like that. So that's how you come out of that. So the whole thing is this. Okay, so build up before the last chorus, the extra on build up, which is like one of my favorite parts of the song, it's just awesome, and the chords are just amazing. Is um, go to D minor, so you know. Again, it's really you know that really important to hit the first heart the first time you hit that D minor then ease right off just drop that dynamic and it's really important to keep the dynamic really low in this especially on this last build up now you go to this chord which is just brilliant so you got your low E string open it's basically an F diminished with a with a with an a low E in the bass. Uh, and then your, your your first finger is on the G string on the seventh fret. Uh, your middle finger is on the A string on the eighth fret. Your ring finger is on the D string on the ninth, and your little finger is on the B string on the ninth. So you got this chord. dissonant it's gorgeous and then you slide up <laughs> so uh, the whole thing is really low dynamic and then start building it up and then you slide up to this one which is the exact same shape and it's basically a B diminished now uh, exactly the same shape as up here but you're on your first finger is on the 13th fret on the G uh, your middle finger is on the 14th fret on the A, ring finger is on the 15th fret on the D, and your little finger is on the 15th fret on the B. And again, you still got the low E. And again, careful not to hit the low E too hard because it will warble out of tune. And you don't want that. You want to hit it hard, but not you know too hard. So the whole thing. slow and then into your chorus again that is one of the coolest parts of any Chili Pepper songs ever it's so I mean the chords are just the build-up is just brilliant. It's just awesome. It's my, it's easy one of my favourite parts of this song. It's so cool. And I say, you know, those chords are so cool. Anyway, so that's that. Let's talk about the last chorus now. Okay, so the last chorus is doubled. Um, you know, it, it goes, it goes through twice before the guitar solo kicks in. Uh, it's exactly the same as you know, as usual. second time around the chorus he does this 
which is really cool. So basically what he does is uh, fifth fret on your A string, and then you pull off to your third fret A string, and then like that, and then you pull off, you go up uh, to your low E string, you pull from your fifth to your third on your low E, and then you go to your low E, uh, open E, sorry, and then back into the chorus again. And it's just a really cool thing. Just really cool. It's really oh, it's amazing. Anyway, so that's that's it basically. Um, let me play through uh, all the key components before I get to the solo, and then we'll get to the whole guitar solo. So that's going to be interesting. Okay, let's uh, let me just play through the whole thing of Danny California, just you know, just so we know where we're going. When I say the whole thing, very 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 compressed version of Danny California. <laughs> Okay, so solo to Danny California. Um, solo is in the key of D minor, and John uses the uh, D minor pentatonic and the F major pentatonic to solo out of, because uh, they're relative major and minor. I'll get to that in the next video. Um, what else to say? Uh, and basically, it, what it is, it, the main theme of Danny California is a um, a quote to Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze. John was listening to a lot of Jimmy and lot, playing a lot like Jimmy at the, that, that kind of like that point in time, and he wanted to put a little quote into Jimmy. So um, the in, the intro to Danny California is the same as the intro to uh, Purple Haze. You know, it's just a diff, different key. So if I play them back to back, you can kind of hear, and then Purple Haze. Now if I was to put Purple Haze into kind of uh, into D minor, it'd be this. Danny California is this. So it's just like one note difference. It just kind of like, you know, just did it. But it's really cool little quote. It's the only solo really in Stadium Arcadium that John really kind of fought out, so to say, and really kind of like, you know, figured out everything else was off the cuff. So, without further ado, let's talk about the solo. There's like a reoccurring theme, which is that one you just saw. So what you're doing here is you start off on the 10th fret on your A string and you slide up to the 12th fret on your A string. And then you go down to the D string, 10th fret. And then you do a double stop on your G and your B strings, and you basically pick that upwards. Do an up pick. It sounds better, and that's what John does. It just gives more attack. So 10th to 12th on the A, 10th on the D, double stop on the G and the B on the 10th fret, up pick. And then you finish up on the D note on the D string, on the 12th fret. 
So that whole that whole first kind of phrase is this. Okay, so that's the first phrase. The second phrase, John. This is where it kind of like differs. It kind of John does certain things live, and he doesn't do something like on on a studio. Code. You kind of mess with this solo a little bit. John messed with it a lot towards the end of um, uh, the Stadium Arcadium toy. It didn't have uh, resemble anything of the original solo. But the, okay, the next phrase is this. <laughs> We're between the eighth and the tenth fret now on the A string, and we go. We start on the tenth fret on the A, and go back down to the uh, the eighth fret on the A, and we end up on the tenth fret on the low E. So tenth, eighth, tenth. That's the room. Really slow, it's like this. And there's no no kind of pull offs, every note's kind of picked. So the whole thing so far. And then we shoot up to the third fret on the low E. To the first fret low E, and then back to the third fret low E, and then back to the first fret low E, and then we go to the, down to the A string and slide from the first fret to the fifth on the A. So now the whole thing is this. in there which is from the first fret back to the third uh, back to the third fret hammer on and then back to the first and then slide so third fret played first fret played then hammer on back to the third then back pull off back down to the first and then slide up to the fifth on the eighth okay and then the next thing it just repeats that phrase again but then there's a variation, which is this. So he does this, and then he does this. So what this is, is you hammer on from the 10th to the 12th on the A, and then down to the D string on the 10th, and then back to the 12th on the A, back to the 10th on the D, and then you slide from the 10th on the D to the 12th on the D string. time. So now putting that in. And then to finish up this phrase we go for slide from the 12th fret on the G to the uh, 14th fret G. And then we go down to the B string on the 13th, 15th fret B, and that finishes the back phrase. So the whole thing together sounds like this really slow. So after that section, Don does a slide down the top low E string, and basically what um, John seems to do, and what I kind of do, is I basically am muting all the strings E, B, G, D, and A strings with my fingers, and was playing the low E, and literally you can slide from any point down past the 12th fret. I normally kind of go from somewhere around the 17th to 18th fret. <coughs> 
and he just does that and then he starts the whole thing again so that kind of you know that incorporated sounds like this and then he starts the phrase again to this one and when you get to this bit the second time around do you go well, so it's this but so you get to that and it's the exact same notes you go in so that's uh where are we uh g string 14 13th fret on the d and then you start the little kind of it's like a it's like a trill but it's a very slow kind of trill you go 15th fret on the B, uh, 13th fret B, and then 14th fret on the G. And pick every note. No note is kind of hammered on or kind of like, you know, or just, just, just knocked on the net fretboard. Pick every note. You can hear John's pick scraping on the string when he does it. And if you want to get really adventurous, you can put this little cool live tri uh, little dilly dum in. Which is just um, high E string between the 13th and 15th. And then finishes up on the 15th fret on the B. Okay, so that's that. So the whole thing so far is this. Okay, so after the, oh, volume's gone. We're back into kind of the main theme of the solo. But then we do this. Which is awesome, and that was a bit sloppy, but forgive me for that one. This is my favorite variation of this bit, this, 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 this solo is awesome. So we started the same way. But then we flip between the A string on the 12th fret and the D string on the 10th. So it's that. So. so that's the first section, and then the next section is this. So it's. So you start the tenth fret on the A string. <clears throat> Lose my voice. Ah, oh, come back, voice. I need you. Uh, 10th fret on the A string, pull off to the 8th fret on the A string and then you go up to the 10th fret on the low E it's really difficult to do with two fingers but I say I don't want to kind of mask what I'm doing so so it's a pull off to the 10th uh, to the 8th on the A finish up on the 10th on the low E and then we go back to the 8th on the A and then go to the 10th on the A, slide to the 12th on the A, and then we go down to the D string on the 10th. And then we go back down to the 10th on the A, pull off to the 8th on the A, and then finish up on the 10th on the low E. So again, really slow, the whole thing is this. I'll do it one more time, super, super slow. And one more time for fun. to mention actually when you go back to the 10th on the A to finish up the phrase you actually slide down from the 12th 
to the temp. Like that. And I say, you, you know, you, if I do miss something, hopefully you can kind of see it and correct accordingly, because I do tend to miss things, because I'm a bit stupid. So, that's it so far. So the whole thing so far, uh, kind of, you know, not super speed, but kind of, I'm going to have to use more fingers, is like this. And also, every time you go for that first kind of phrase, you want to kind of slide into quite far, if you can, really. I mean, you can slide from... You can slide from a tenth, but John kind of exaggerates that first. If you know what I mean. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, the whole thing so far is this. back to the main theme and then we go to variation two that kind of thing but what we do this time is we bend up the 12th fret the toad and that just yeah that, that bend is just that's just John Fashanti that is so it's the same kind of thing so we've got that rip and then we go from the 10th to the 12th flip between the 12th and the 10th on the, the A and D and we finish that up on there, and then we mimic it an octave higher. So it's here. So we have, we start out on the 13th, uh, 14th fret, sorry, on the G, uh, 13th fret on the B, and then we bend up the 15th fret on the B. It's just an octave higher. So that whole section is this. We do the slide down again and then back to the main phrase again and after that that's when you stamp on the Ibanez wah and go balmy with this trill you bend up the uh, G string on the 12th fret and then you go down to the 10th fret on the uh, B and then up to the 13th fret and then pull off on the 13th fret on the B that's what John's doing, but because he's got his DS2 on, let's see if I can get to my pedal board here, uh, it just sounds incredible. It's just those two notes. And I say, I hope you can hear that. It's quite hard to get to my pedal board because it's literally right on my feet. But that's the trill. And he's strumming it. So he's, getting, he's, hitting, the, he's hitting only the G and the B, but because he's strumming, it's just really intense and it's just, you know, you get amazing sound. And then what he does is he reaches uh, on the high E string, kind of keeps his fingers exactly where they are, kind of bars those, the B in the high E, and he basically plays the fir uh, 13th fret and the 15th fret. And he's kind of pulling off. In The last part of the solo is very erratic and it always was live, and he never really did the same thing live that he did in the studio. I can imagine the, the crazy wah wah bit, after that he was just free roaming, and that's what I would like all of you out there to kind of do, and play with this ending, and just go off on one. Uh, basically, you're using D minor pentatonic, so. So that scale, you start on your 10th fret and your low E, 13th fret low E, 10th fret A, 12th fret A, 10th fret D, 12th fret D, 10th uh, fret G, 12th fret G, 10th fret B, 13th uh, fret B, 10th uh, fret high E, and you finish up on the 13th fret high E. And the, the, the only other note you need is the 15th fret on the high E, and that's what John's doing now. And you can just basically just shred your head off. It's just super fast, crazy playing. Um, and just basically, once you've kind of got the, you need that. And that's achieved by basically having the wah pedal on full tilt. So, you know, you just turn, you just stand on the wah pedal, turn it on. So it's really harsh, basically. That's how John gets that sound. It's just 
really emphasizes it. Um, and then just kind of, and then you can kind of go, as long as you end on this bit, which is you're bending up the 12th fret on the B, a uh, uh, G, sorry. And then you pull off and release it to the 10th fret on the G and finish up on the D note on the uh, 12th fret on the D string. You're totally fine. You can do anything there. So it's... Or... You can put a bit of ready-made in. Or whatever. Basically, if you stick to that D minor pentatonic, you cannot go wrong. There is no rote notes you can kind of go wrong with. So, uh, let me play the whole solo for you now in clean, uh, and then I'll try and play it full tilt. I'll play it really slow and clean, and then um, hopefully, you know, we're, that's the whole song. And I'm going to show you a couple of little nibbly bits at the end as well that he uh, did during recording. So, let me show you that. Okay, let's try and do this slow. <laughs> distortion especially that last bit without the wah wah very strange so uh let me I don't, I don't know if i can do this let me see if i can move my pedal board a smidge and see if i can do it full tilt now it might sound a bit weird because the camera's really close <laughs> California solo. Um, that's the whole song. Uh, I hope I hope I've taught it okay. I hope I hope it's something that you can learn. Let me talk about another thing quick. A couple of little bits that uh, John would do with recording. That first section where he does the. Let's do that with the DS2. Those bits. What John did a lot uh, in the recording process. He actually did this, which is a very Jimi Hendrix thing. So basically you're bending it and then just flicking your select switch from your bridge to your neck just really fast and again it's a very Jimi Hendrix thing to do back then. It simulates Jimi when he would turn his wire pedal off and on really fast. So um, yeah that's it. That's the whole of Danny California. I hope this video has been informative. I hope you know it's it's maybe covered some of the bits that um, some people weren't sure on. Uh, some bits maybe thought, oh, I've never noticed that before or something like that. Um, I'm not going to go into any more detail, really. I just kind of want to keep it as you know as, as simple and bare bones as the harmonies in just before the end of the solo. <laughs> It's just 
John said that like, that was stuff he figured out in the studio. It wasn't stuff kind of like, you know, and he, he, he didn't really do it live until Josh joined and played with him. And it's not necessary, really, if you're the only guitarist, you don't want to be really doing it. Okay, okay. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I had to do a bit of a weird edit there. Basically, what I'm saying is those harmony bits, you don't really want to be doing them, really. just want to be sticking to the big power chords and so on and so forth. I uh, hope, you know, this has been enlightening. I always try to be. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again very soon for another video. Have a great morning, afternoon, and good evening. <gasps> Goodbye now. There's a rabbit. Look. Little Len. Goodbye.